So just what is the SAC method and why do we need another person putting out videos on war game terrain? If you look up war game terrain of different subjects, you'll find dozens of videos, cheap and easy and the best and the most realistic and everything under the sun. So what does the SAC method and myself bring to the table that these other people don't bring? Well, I think it's because I have formulated a system that truly is easy and truly does produce what I consider decent results and is cheap. So in other words, simple, acceptable, and cheap. What does that mean? What that means is I'm trying to make content for people whose wargaming hobby isn't maybe number one in their life and they have a lot of different stuff they have to do. And so they might not have all the different tools, all the different stuff on hand. And when they do have time to work on it, they only have a limited amount of time. So even though something may be easy to do, when you put in a lot of steps, it keeps it from being simple. So my methods that I'm trying to pass on to people have very few steps. They are... You know, obviously you're going to have to buy stuff. I mean, you're not going to have, you know, certain things on hand naturally, but it limits the amount of stuff that you normally have to buy. So, you know, as I watch a video, say, on a method for making trees, if that method includes uh, purchasing sea foam, purchasing five different types of spray paint color, purchasing different types of, you know, two or three different types of gluing mat type of stuff, well, it's not really simple anymore. And unless you have that stuff on hand, it's really not that cheap anymore. And so I look at things, what can produce decent and good results, but can be done relatively easy. Because if it's not going to be simple and it's not going to be cheap, just buy ready-made. Because there's a ton of good ready-made products out there. But this are for people that want to make some stuff and can do it in an affordable way and mitigate some of the steps. So, for instance, I'm going to have a video on model hedges. Part of it is to place a base on it. So what did I make my bases out of? Um, popsicle sticks. I found some popsicle sticks that were one inch thick or one inch wide by eight inches long and that allowed the hedges to sit on them. They kind of shrink into the background and we really don't see them because again, the hedges are the focal point. Um, you see in this picture here, the idea is that I want the hedges to be what you look at, not some elaborate base. When I want an elaborate base, that elaborate base is really to take your attention away from the fact that like on a miniature that I suck at painting. So I'm not a very good painter. So I want the bases to be kind of elaborate and look good because it takes your eye off the fact it's a relatively simple paint job. And so I myself do war gaming for historical war gaming, War of the Roses. A lot of my um, war gaming terrain is based around that, but I also do Necromunda. Me and my wife play Necromunda together, so there is the sci-fi aspect of it too. She does some terrain making herself. She's a phenomenal artist, way better than I am. I have a certain set rigid, like regimental way. She's much more free flowing and inventive. I'm not. So I have found and picked up some stuff along the way that has helped me. And so I really want to pass that on to other people. Um, I've already made a video about how I did some trees using the Woodland Scenics armatures and then this lichen moss and some fine ground sea foam, not sea foam, fine ground foam. Um, sea foam is a totally different product. It does produce a great tree, but then you have to buy some and then you have to do a pretty elaborate process, relatively speaking, compared to my method in order to make it work. My method just involved a tree armatures, the lichen moss, Elaine's tacky glue, some dollar store uh, hairspray, and some uh, blended turf fine ground foam from Woodland Scenics. And all in, especially if you can source it locally, because I've noticed Woodland Scenics products are a little bit more expensive on Amazon. But if you can source it locally or buy stuff, uh, you know, a little bit larger quantities from like a Scenic Express, you'll save a tremendous amount of money that way. Um, it's not always an option. I live um, 
in central Kentucky, just uh, used to live in Columbus. In Columbus, there was several places you could go to at one time, although the primary one that I went to growing up near uh, the east side of Columbus would have been um, Hobby, uh, it was a Hobby Town or Hobby Land. It might have been Hobby Land. Anyways, it was on the east side of Reynoldsburg. It was on East Main Street for the longest time. It went to Broaden and eventually it closed. Another like game, board game type of store went in there and then that closed too before it really had a chance to take off. Either way, um, so it started with some trees. I'm about to do one for hedges. I'm going to do one for some buildings, uh, the basic bushes, which hedges to me, you know, it's the same process. And then getting into some river sections, some other stuff like that. So if you want to stay tuned, check it out. Uh, like and subscribe. I have a playlist together for just the hobby stuff. I do a lot of other content like nuclear war simulation. I do home gym stuff and many other topics. So if you like kind of how I present stuff, like and subscribe to some of the other stuff. Thank you and I look forward to you watching more videos.